Let us pray. Out of your word and into our hearts, may your truth take root and grow until we're overwhelmed by your love and by your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we conclude our series on the faces of Jesus. This was a series that we started at the beginning of Lent where we asked artists to give us their representation, their best depiction of the face of Jesus. And those paintings served as inspiration for the sermons that Terry and I have delivered throughout Lent and then again today. Today's inspiration comes from my wife Anne, her painting Illumination. And she wrote this about this painting. In reflecting on this painting, we see the dark green of the garden where Mary went early on that morning. Faint shades of blue and purple peek through as the morning light at dawn in the top left corner. Light illuminates the center of the canvas with subtle shadows of red, yellow, and orange emerging up in the right corner. Daybreak has come. I think Anne's depiction is a beautiful representation of the power and the mystery of the resurrection, which is an essential belief of the Christian faith. And that's why sometimes people ask me, is Jesus' resurrection real? Well, my answer is always yes. And it's yes because I've seen on too many instances evidence of the power of the resurrection in people's lives. I witness the reality of the resurrection every time someone accepts God's grace, resulting in them casting off their old self and taking on a new self, becoming a new creation. And this is what Paul talked about in Corinthians when he said, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See. Everything has become new. Richard Gribble tells a story about Reverend David Johnson. He was fresh out of seminary, and he was putting the last touches on his sermon for his Easter, his first Easter at a new church, new pastor, new church, trying to make a good impression. So his wife asked what he was preaching on for Easter, and having only recently been plucked out of academia, he puffed up his chest and he said, well, I'm going to be describing the resurrection as a metaphor for how we are no longer estranged from our authentic self. Well, he was so proud of what he had just said that he didn't notice his wife rolling her eyes. On Saturday evening before Easter, David went to the church to rehearse with the youth group for the sunrise service. At the end of the rehearsal, a couple of youth asked David for a ride home, which he said he was glad to do, but that they needed to remember he was still new in town, and so not only would he need directions how to get to their house, but then he would need directions how to get from their house back home to his house. After dropping the youth off and driving away, David was trying to remember which turn it was they said that he should take that would get him home. There were no cell phones back then, so he continued driving in hopes of finding someone that he could ask for help. Eventually, he found himself on a deserted dirt road, and so as he attempted to make a U-turn, the engine sputtered and stalled and completely died. He was not only hopelessly lost, but now he was out of gas, too. David felt sick. It was late. There was no sign of a house nearby. And after 20 minutes of walking, he finally saw some lights off in the distance, but it was a flashing neon sign. And as he got close enough, he could read it was a place called the Boondocks. Although new to town, David already knew from his parishioners that this was not a safe place to be late at night. As he approached the roadhouse, he walked through the parking lot and a slew of motorcycles, which added to his anxiety. 
As David walked inside, the smell of beer and cigarette smoke overwhelmed him. And he didn't see anybody he recognized, and that was both a comfort and a disappointment at the same time. (laughs) He wondered what his church members would say if they knew that their new pastor was at the boondocks on Saturday night before Easter. David approached the bartender, intending to ask to use a phone to call a cab, But his throat was a little parched from walking on the dirt road, and so he decided he would order a Coke first. Another patron who was seated near him invited him to play a game of pool. Well, David loved billiards. As a matter of fact, from the age of six, he'd been playing, so he was pretty good. Well, on this night, he wasn't just pretty good. He was on fire. He cleared the table on two consecutive games after the break. Well, this got the attention of this burly-looking guy. Everybody called him Turk, and he said, All right, I want to play you. Well, like I said, David was good. Turk was also good. But on that night... David was still better. And after winning three games, Turk invited him over to the bar and bought him another Coke and announced that from now on, David would be known as Shark. (laughs) Then Turk asked the inevitable question, what do you do? After clearing his throat, David said, I'm the new minister at the church on Maple Street in town. And everybody in the bar heard that, and they were just kind of murmuring about this. And Turk said, quiet, we got a preacher in the house. And then Turk said to David, I've never been to church. My mother wasn't married when I was born, so the church people kicked her out. All I know about God, I learned from television. So tell me, why is Easter such a big deal? David began to tell this ragtag congregation about Jesus and how he loved everybody, including those who were considered unworthy of that love. He told them how Jesus cured people of diseases, forgave their sins, and demonstrated unconditional love in every way. And although Jesus healed people and taught them about God's love, there were some people who still despised him. One day, David said, Jesus was brought before a court where he was found guilty of being a revolutionary. He was sentenced to death, and they began immediately to bring about his execution. Roman soldiers nailed him to a cross. Because he had already been beaten and severely tortured before his crucifixion, he only lasted for about three hours on the cross. Some friends took his body down and laid it in a tomb just as dusk fell at the end of the day, right before the day of rest, the Sabbath. And they would need to return after the Sabbath to finalize Jesus' burial. You could have heard a pin drop in that bar as David told this story. He continued, On Sunday... One of Jesus' friends, a woman, Mary Magdalene, went to the tomb early in the morning to attend to his body, but it wasn't there. She ran to tell the other disciples who came to see for themselves. They left, but Mary stayed. Mary weeped as she looked into the tomb. But then she was shocked to see two angels there. It wasn't empty anymore. There were two angels who were seated, and they told her that Jesus wasn't there, that he had risen from the dead. Then, sensing someone behind her, Mary turned to see a man that she presumed to be the gardener, and so she asked him to tell her where he had taken Jesus' body, because then she would go there and take care of it. Then the man that she thought was a gardener called her name, Mary. And she realized that it was Jesus. Turk said, that's crazy. What's all this mean? 
David said it means everything is changed. God's turning our world upside down. He's making losers into winners. And he's making outsiders into insiders. And even more, he's turning death into new life. When God raised Jesus from the dead, he said he destroyed the power of sin. So it no longer has a hold on us because he can forgive anything. But death has also lost its power because he can raise the dead to life. That's why Easter is such a big deal. It changes everything. Well, the conversation began to die down and people resumed drinking and playing pool. And that gave David an opportunity to talk to Turk about his predicament with his car. Well, his new friend siphoned some gas out of his motorcycle and put David on the back of the motorcycle and rode back out to where his car was and got the gas in and then gave him directions as to how he could get back home. When David arrived home, his wife, who was worried and upset, finally calmed down as he told her about the adventure that he had. When she encouraged him to get to bed because he had an early morning ahead, he said, no, I've got a little bit of work to do on my sermon." The next day, David didn't talk about metaphors of the resurrection or self-authentication as he planned. Instead, he told the story of God raising Jesus from the dead and how that gives every one of us the opportunity for a new life. Many visitors were present at David's church that Easter, including a strange group of leather-clad bikers who parked their noisy motorcycles out in front of the church. After the service, one of the parishioners came up to greet them and asked, how did, how did y'all find our church? And Turk said, where was Shark? <laughs> David and Turk's encounter is a story of transformation through resurrection. As I said, I believe in the resurrection because I've seen its effects too many times for it not to be true. The miracle of the resurrection happens all the time in the rooms of the 18 weekly meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous that we host across the street back here where hurting and broken people tap into their higher power overcoming the harmful effects of addiction. That's resurrection. Resurrection happens in the lives of children here in our church when they hear of the love of God for them. And the only response they can give is that they want to give their whole hearts to Jesus Christ. Resurrection happens in our youth group as students experience God's love, moving them to explore a life of humble service where they will bring mercy and justice to the forgotten and the lonely. That's resurrection. And resurrection can happen to us too. That is, if we're willing to admit that we need Jesus to save us from our selfish and destructive desires. Is Jesus' resurrection real? Oh yes. And all you have to do is ask those of us who have received God's love and become a new creation. We would love to tell you about it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.